Hi, welcome to this video today, which is on the uh, 24th of January. It's Sunday. In this video, we're going to look at catching big trend changes and trend following big trends. And I've selected out 12 of my favorite trade setups for the week ahead. They all offer, in our view, excellent risk to reward. So we'll analyze them from both a technical and sentiment perspective. Now we're going to go over and take a look at the charts, but uh, just before we do so, please do keep in mind, it is my view as of this specific moment in time, it could of course change in line with the market actions and conditions. If you want all our trading techniques and our daily technical sentiment analysis of 14 FX pairs, you can get life access to our member center on the link beneath this video. You can also follow us on our Facebook page, join our Facebook group of traders and check out our recommended regulated ECN broker. Right, let's go and take a look at the charts. Uh, we're just on the chart of Euro USD. I'm just using charts from our member center to go through all the trade setups. Now, before I discuss this one, I just want to show you the sentiment behind uh, Euro USD. And I've put up what's called uh, the City FX pain indicator. It's from Citibank. And uh, what it shows, this red line down here, is speculative fund positioning. And obviously they buy the euro hard and now they're rolling over to the downside. Now this indicator, uh, when you reach this line here, it's indicated really big trend changes. So we're looking for a big trend change. Um, speculators heavily long. We think they're going to get taken out on stop. I just want to look at a couple of other uh, charts in relation to the euro. Uh, this is coronavirus cases and deaths. And now, in terms of eurozone, market very optimistic about a uh, recovery to pre-pandemic levels pretty quickly. But uh, there's a few months of pain coming. You can see, obviously, the cases surge and the deaths are coming up. And that is going to remain a uh, 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 how would I put it, uh, remain the case, uh, I think, until the cold weather abates. So you've got another couple of months of that. And there's a lot of problems with vaccine distribution in the EU. Uh, market is looking for the EU economy to recover quicker than um, uh, the US economy. Sorry, I forgot the name of the country. But you can see the US line here in blue. This is uh, from Goldman Sachs. It's basically the impact on economic activity due to lockdowns, okay? So what you've got, you know, not too bad for the US. It's a lot worse for the Eurozone, okay? So just a little bit of background uh, to Euro USD from a sentiment and fundamental perspective. Now, if we go back to the chart, um, we can see, obviously, the Euro had a big rally um, from the, well, sorry, from the 116 level breaks this green line, which is a 20-day moving average, which very often supports a big trend. You don't get a touch of it from 118 up to the highs of 123.60. Um, then we roll over, we break it, okay? Try and get back through it. Can't get through it. Go down. Now you get a rally back to test it, okay? Now, if you're bearish of the euro like us, you know, that 122 level double trend line resistance and the 20 day moving average should hold the rally. Um, now we're in a bit higher, you can see we're in at 122.65. I bought the stop down, and get 15 pips if we were stopped out. But uh, if you want to trade it fresh, if we went through the 122 level, okay, just sell back through the level. If we don't go through the level, just sell through this double bottom here. Uh, size of the speculative position points to a move down to 118 and probably a run on to 116. Okay, so potentially 500 pips longer term. And the market is just too bullish of, of the euro. We did have the ECB last week. Um, they're just going to have to print money, uh, very sorry, more money going forward, which is bearish, obviously. US is printing money. But if you look at the rate of change between the US and the EU, the EU are printing more relative to GDP, which is bearish. There's negative rates in Eurozone. Euro, 
going down. Now, for any new viewers watching our videos, um, we're really just always trying to key off big levels. There's not too many lines on our chart. So I don't really like the look of Euros. I like the look of Euro correlated currency short as well. I'll come um, to a few of those in a moment. Let's go to our next pair. Our next pair is going to be AUD USD. This has been a huge uptrend. Okay, I just want to show you something in relation to um, the pair, which is very important to keep an eye on. Uh, this is iron ore. Okay, now iron ore is obviously the major export of Australia. And look at this for a rally. It's huge, isn't it? It's 107 percent in just six months. It's the strongest commodity in the period. But speculators are really heavily long. And we expect, yeah, speculators to come out on the stop. This is obviously a weekly chart. And we see a kind of double top coming in on the daily chart. So if you're looking at AUD USD, you should be looking at iron ore. I expect a breakdown back to here. Okay. Maybe um, even 120. Yeah. If we get traction to the downside, um, in iron ore, it's going to drag the AUD down. I'll put the fundamentals here. You know, obviously China has been buying iron ore uh, from Australia. Uh, they've got a rise in infection rates in China now. You've got the Chinese Lunar New Year shut... Oh, sorry, I didn't spell shutdown correctly. Shutdown coming, um, where factories will be closing. And you've got the resumption of production by B BHP and Vale in Brazil. Brazil they had a lot of problems with production, which also helped the iron ore price go up. Um, so you've got more supply coming. That will pressure prices lower in our view. Now, if we go back to the charts, it's a massive rally. Get above the 20-day moving average here. Look at it. One poke there. Briefly threw on a tail there. But, um, yeah, still above the 20-day moving average. Now... Despite iron ore prices being strong, you can see you've had seven attempts to take out resistance and you come down to the 20 day moving average, okay? And this big down slope, or sorry, not down sloping, up sloping um, line here of support. So I think you just got to get through the low here. I'm going to say 76, seven, sorry, 76.80, okay? Um, that's clear of the round number. Obviously, a lot of order flow around round numbers. So you want to give a little bit of room away from the round number. So giving it just 20 pips on this one. And I'm hoping then we see follow through to the downside. And you can see my target, 72 and 70. And I think they're achievable longer term. Yeah, this is obviously a nice big move up on the daily chart. But check out the weekly chart. That is a 35% rise. The Aussie is one of the most overbought major currencies, if not the most overbought major currency. Speculators heavily long, and we think they're going to get taken out on stop. Um, I like all the commodity currencies. I'm now going to go to USD CAD. Um, in terms of this pair, let me get my chart lined up. You're quite messy price action. We come down, support level there, bounce. Then we bounce, then we come through on that tail. I don't know if you can see, it's a very small tail, just down to the round number at 126, trying to take it out. Can't, a big rebound, okay? Um, my own view on this one is, it's just a buy on strength next week. You know, commodity prices are not just iron ore, they're extremely overbought. And in our view, they're going to be coming down. In terms of um, USD CAD, uh, let's have a look at crude oil. WT crude oil. Let's go to the daily chart for this one. This rally here is about 45%. But you can see now kind of red, blue trying to get up, red down, rally, limp red there with a the tail that can't get through. Okay, we've kind of exhausted a bit there and come back above the 52 level. We go through here. Um, yeah, I think personally fair value for crude is probably down at somewhere like 44. So if um, crude oil goes down, then that'll pressure the CAD as well. The USD is oversold on the CAD anyway. Okay. I know it's been kind of messy price sanction, but that little tail there and that big blue coming up at the 20 day moving average, just take it out, get above the high 
and I'm hoping we'll go up to 132 longer term. You've always got 130 as a resistance level in the way, which I haven't drawn in. But uh, how oversold is the USD? Uh, it's just so oversold. Um, yeah, speculators generally hold their biggest short position since 2011. I did the City Pain Index for the USD just generally last week and showed the size of the rally in 2011 when speculators got taken out. Um, I think we could see a rally like that again. Okay, right, we'll just look at some more USD pairs. Let's uh, go over to the next one, which is going to be NZD USD. Right, we're on NZD USD. And in terms of um, this pair, nice big move up from the 66 level. Then we top out, come down, we hold this 20 day moving average, then we snap it. I thought we'd follow through to the downside, but we mount a bit of a rally back above the 20 day moving average. We cannot get through this level at the moment to get at these highs. Market are very bullish of both the AUD and the NZD, but it's not really you know, gaining headway to the upside. So it's just really um, a snap of the low. Uh, you know, Friday's low, then we should be off to the downside. Now, in terms of all the pairs we're looking at, the risk to reward is you know, five to one or more. Okay, Now, they might not all come off, but the dollar... Uh, it's just so oversold. In 2011, we had 500 pip moves. Uh, we could easily have them again. Now, in terms of um, yeah, when you're trying to catch an old big trends, you, know, you want to come through, I think I said earlier, you want to come through big levels and give your stop a little bit of room. You're not interested in the day-to-day -day fluctuations. You know? The only thing that would change my bearish view on this one is if we took out that double top, okay? Okay, so focus on the big levels. The day-to-day -day fluctuations don't matter. And also keep in mind, sometimes big trends take a little while to work out. Okay, I've been bullish of the dollar for the last couple of weeks. Okay, we've seen a little bit of dollar strength, but nothing big yet. Let's see what happens in the new week. Uh, next pair I'm going to look at is a, a slower moving pair, but I think it's got a really good risk to reward on it, which is uh, the US dollar against the Swiss franc. Now, in terms of um, Swiss franc, it's one of the most overvalued currencies in the world. The dollar springs up there, and now we're just in a tight sideways channel. Now, very often, um, if you're looking for trend changes, indicates a big move coming when the volatility drops down. You can see the volatility drop down as the outer Bollinger Bands narrow. It's just simply a buy through these highs, and then I think we'll just follow through to the upside. If you're coming in fresh, the stop can be tight behind this level here. In terms of speculators, um, they hold near a decade um, high in terms of short position. So if we do break out, they should get hit on stop up to 92. Right, next pair we're going to look at is a um, petro currency. Yeah, just said we're bearish of crude oil. Norway, uh, this is USD NOC, it is the biggest oil exporter in Europe, okay, and you do see a really big downtrend, okay, get support here, briefly get through that 20 day moving average down to support, bounce, okay, just want this double trend line to give way, um, and then obviously looking for major upside. Obviously, the knock is a euro correlated currency, um. So if the euro goes down, the correlated currencies very often go down quicker. So I think it's always worth yeah, trading them. Okay, so we like USD knock. Uh, one we really like is this one here, which is USD SEC. And uh, this is the Swedish kroner. And it's actually been the strongest currency against the USD this year. It is a big downtrend. Okay. Then we come up and we take out the 20 day moving average. And then we come back to it, but kind of steady at the level. It's just a buy on a breakout. A lot of speculators um, short the USD. Breakout, looking for the stop hit, and then a move to the upside. If we were to go through the 20 day moving average, you could look for the sport zone here to hold and come back through it. Okay, last USD pair before we go and look at some crosses is going to be. An emerging market currency, so an exotic, um, which is USD 
MXN. Now, if you get a big broad-based dollar rally, just like in 2011, you should see the USD hit the exotic currencies hard. Now, in terms of this one, it's been very choppy price action. You get a nice move up there, then back. You poke to a new low there. That actually stopped us out of a position. And now we've come back in on the breakout. And uh, just through the 20-day moving average, when you've got narrow sideways action, not too important, a lot of people would say, but it's through the 20, it's quite a nice blue. Run that level, then we should gravitate up. Now, if we do run this level, what I'll do is my stop will not be back here, okay? I'll be adding to my position, okay? And I'll bring the stop up probably behind the trade moving average. Now, in terms of all the trades we're looking at today, uh, you've seen we're already in and we'll be adding on the breaks uh, support or resistance, which we've indicated in this video. So they're the USD pairs. Um, now let's uh, look at the crosses and we're gonna start uh, with some yen crosses. All right, well now you do, JPY, and I'm just finishing off with three yen pairs and three British pound pairs. Now, in terms of AUD, JPY, get a big breakout here. Up we go, touch the 20, up. Then we meet resistance up here. Come down, 20 holds. Then we get kind of a limp rally, in my view. Market obviously really, really bullish of the Aussie, but that's a limp rally, and then we sit on the 20 day moving average. So what I'm looking for here, already in with a small position, I will add, I want this level to give way. This pair I'm giving it 79.16. See over on the left, if that gets taken out, clear of the round number, uh, I expect all of this uh, rally here to be retraced down to the, um, sorry, 76 level. So really good risk to reward. If we break lower, my stop at present is behind here. Uh, I can bring that down. Um, if we rally back to the highs and we failed up there, I might take another position. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm very bearish of the AUD. JPY will firm up with the USD. Um, might even firm up without the USD. Uh, yeah, just very, very oversold. I'm not going to discuss all the fundamentals of the yen in this video. You can read my notes uh, in the member center. So we really like to look at this position. Um, another commodity currency, NZD against JPY. A bit similar, however, we do slice the 20, thought we'd get the follow on, we come back up. Um, but yeah, we're not getting near this resistance level here or these highs here. Just really looking for that level to hold, 75, big round number. Just need this level taken out here. And then we should see a good decline, just like in the Aussie or, or what we're looking for at AUD, JPY. Last of the yen pairs is going to be uh, Euro JPY. Now for us, um, the Euro, the fundamentals have turned bearish, longer term, okay? Uh, we did top out here, we came down quite nicely. Yeah, we snapped out that 20 day moving average, then we get these candles here, and then we come up to test the 20 day moving average. It's a similar story in this pair uh, as it is in Euro USD. If it comes back, test the 20 day moving average and it holds, then you just want to sell off the level, okay? So really, um, just through the uh, open of uh, Friday, and then I think we should get to the move to the downside. Um, in terms of bond yields, I mentioned them last week, uh, they favor uh, the JPY over the euro. Obviously they favor uh, the USD over the euro as well, so looking for a big breakdown. So. That completes the um, JPY pairs. Now I want to look at um, some GBP pairs. And this one actually is quite interesting. It's um, Euro GBP. And look at this from messy, horrible price sanction. Obviously we had the Brexit um, trade deal in the balance, but uh, yeah, eventually we drop away from the 20 day moving average. We rally back to 88. And we see this as a level that should hold on a closed basis, okay? Um, we're in at 90.10, so we've got a reasonable profit in this one. This level should hold through the low. And the downside potential in this one is big. I put the weekly support at 83. It's also a monthly 
um, support as well down here okay on the tails but look at the euros rally here okay looking for 83 but if you're looking for a long-term trade i personally think we could get back to here i mean that's very long term but if you want to be a trend follower um yeah huge downside potential hopefully we'll take out the um 20 day moving average and also the tw sorry the 20 month moving average and uh, go to the downside now where do i want to go next i want to go to the pound against two commodity currencies and as you can gather i really am bearish of the commodity currencies i want to find gbp aud aud just overbought everywhere and the pound has made a bottom okay we're now kind of sitting above this double trend line support. This 176 level um, should hold pullbacks, okay? And uh, in terms of the overvaluation of Aussie, it's just so big. Obviously, we're looking for a really big rally. 184 longer term, 180 shorter term. Decent profits in this one so far, but there's way more to come. I think we've formed a bottom. This is going to become a major trend to the upside there's something i didn't mention about the british pound earlier on um against the euro um yeah obviously we will think the euro is bearish i've discussed it when we we're talking about the usd in terms of yeah the economy the central bank policy etc but look at vaccination speed i've posted um a chart on this in the facebook group the uk is leading the world in yeah, the speed of vaccinations, um, which I take as really, really bullish against the euro and also against uh, the AUD and my next and final pair, which is going to be GBP NZD. This one, nice move up above the 20, hold up away back at first level um, support or, or, or nearby support at 190. Uh, Decent profits in this one as well, but I think more to come. I've got my stop really close to protect a profit. So if we're taken out, we're taken out. This level at the moment, if we're not taken out, is the level to watch. You can see it's 191.30, just clear of the round number. Break out there, and then we should retrace that whole rally down. Okay, so there's plenty of pairs to look out for. I picked out. 12 if you can't decide the best say in terms of the yen pairs or the pound pairs or uh what well, obviously the usd pairs as well you can just do them as one trade and split your risk across them I mean, i'm sure a lot of people watching this video will have their favorites as well where they really want to wait on one two or three pairs but uh, just today uh given a selection uh we will see how um things go in the coming week but just generally i think the market just way too bearish of the usd it suffered because we've had risk on I'm not saying we're going to go to big risk off but uh, i think some caution will come into the market speculators just too long of other currencies against the usd the usd will spring back it may not spring back as much as in 2011 but it's going to have a big rally in our view we're looking for it to be confirmed next week um we see the yen and uh, pound we're very bullish of as well incidentally for anyone who's a member of ours uh, we think we could see some downside in stocks plenty of warning signs that we could get uh, a correction it has been a big bull move up um i'm going to put plenty of charts and background info in my weekly market update which you can go and check out of course if stocks go down all of the pairs that we're looking at here will get an additional boost but that is now the video for the day thank you very much for watching it take care have a good trading week